imagination. It is a film to describe to you the effect of cymatic frequencies on matter. Why don't you describe for me as vividly as you can what it is you're worried about, what it is that the nightmare scenario looks like? Fortunately, there's very few things, and most of them are very low probability. Uh, you know, some big volcanic explosion, uh, gigantic earthquake, asteroid. Well, at least in the nuclear case, You've got to say we take it quite seriously. We budget a lot of money, have a lot of people who think about nuclear deterrence. And I'm very glad that work's being done. And I rate the chance of a nuclear war in my lifetime as being fairly low. Uh, I rate the chance of a widespread epidemic far worse than Ebola in my lifetime as well over 50%. Ebola in America, out of control. Killer disease spreading fast. Ebola on the backs of ISIS. There's a lot of panic. Chilling, deadly, dangerous. Scarier by the moment. Shut down the flight, secure the borders. We've immersed ourselves in an ocean of electromagnetic radiation. It's all around us now. Invisible, we can't see it, but we know it's there. Every time you lift up your mobile phone, you know it's there. From texting to surfing the web and even watching TV, we use our cell phones to do just about everything today. We assume that these devices that we can't live without are safe for us. And if you ask any major cell phone manufacturer, they'll tell you that they are. But behind countless PR campaigns and corporate funded studies lie the ugly possible truth about the hidden effects that cell phones have on us. When my eight month old grandson showed that he was really smart with a phone, I began to get curious about what we knew about cell phones. And what I found really concerned me. I learned that other countries, namely Israel and England, had already issued warnings that children should not even use cell phones. Then I began to do research on this about seven years ago. The brain of a child absorbs twice as much radiation as an adult. That's a stunning fact. Few people are aware of it. 19 or 20 years old, they will have used the phone for 10 years, and we have no idea what type of risk that's carrying. A major new study out this evening is raising a lot of questions about a link between cell phones and cancer. KPIX 5's Andrea Borba breaks it all down for us. It's the latest wake-up call about cell phone use, the largest federal study to date of the health risks of cell phone radiation. It found increased incidences of 11 different types of tumors in rodents exposed to levels of cell phone radiation that meet or exceed federal guidelines. Dr. Joel Moskowitz of UC Berkeley says even though they're just mice and rats, it's significant. They always, almost always use mice and rats because they predict very well the effects on humans. The two types of tumors that were most commonly seen in the male rats are also the two types of tumors uh, that we're seeing increased incidence in uh, controlled studies of humans. Something the authors of the study acknowledge, though they do warn the findings should not be directly extrapolated to human cell phone usage, and the American Cancer Society has contended the evidence for an association between cell phone and cancer is weak. I, I think they are engaging in problem minimization to some extent. Meanwhile, wireless safety advocates like Moskowitz take the report as yet another signal not to get too close to your cell phone. Use speakerphone, text, keep the cell phone away from your head. Don't store the cell phone directly on your body if it's turned on. He also advises not using your phone when the connection is poor and don't make calls while driving. When you're moving about, the, the cell phone is constantly searching for new cell towers and so it's putting out more radiation. It's advice that could make you a less distracted driver as well. Andrea Borba, KPIX 5.
Now, we should note this is a draft report. The final version will be released in March. The California Department of Public Health also advises limiting contact with your cell phone. Thank you so much. Great to have you with us. So what is the truth about cell phones? The truth is they're very valuable devices, and they are two-way microwave radios that should not be held directly next to the brain or body. And just like don't put your hand in the microwave oven kind of thing. I mean, no. not that you can anyway because they make it see it. Right, but on the other hand, a cell phone is a very weak form of microwave radiation. Now, it's not as powerful as an oven, but it has a very similar frequency, and we are, some of us, using it for thousands of minutes a month right next to our brain. And I'm particularly concerned about how we're giving it to infants and toddlers. We have an announcement, finally, on whether cell phones cause cancer. It's something well, it's something that a lot of cell phone users worry about. Could your cell phone make you sick? Researchers have been debating whether the radiation from cell phones poses any kind of a health risk. Cell phones and the possible risk of cancer, brain cancer in particular. Today, a new report says cell phones may raise the risk of brain cancer. Concern surrounding harmful side effects from cell phone radiation is growing worldwide. How big of a problem is it? A potential pandemic. As of 2011, there are over 5.3 billion mobile phone users worldwide. That's over 77% of the world's population. Do you believe your cell phone is safe? Once upon a time, smoking was considered safe. I'd walk a mile for a camel. We all know cigarette smoking is now proven to be hazardous to your health. Do you use your cell phone 10 minutes or more per day? If so, you might be in danger. Fact, most cell phones come with a notice that says do not hold closer than one inch from your body. Fact, insurance companies refuse coverage to cell phone companies for claims made by consumers due to possible illnesses caused by radiation exposure from their mobile devices. Fact. A very good question, and the answer is, the reason I set up Environmental Health Trust is so that we don't have to wait 40 years for the kind of proof that we now have about ionizing radiation, which was what was in those shoes and which was on that radiant dial. What we know now is that people who use cell phones heavily uh, for 10 years or more have doubled or greater the risk of brain cancer in most well-controlled studies. These are the common symptoms that people start to experience. This is actually from a published paper on the health effects of wireless smart meters. Did you know studies have proven that cell phone radiation detrimentally affects the protective layers surrounding your brain? Now, in fact, cancer is not the main concern that I have. I'm really concerned about sperm count and about effects on pregnancy. I just got back from a conference in Turkey and Greece where we heard new studies showing that prenatal exposure to animals results in offspring that have smaller brains and more hyperactivity. Hmm. Wow. Um, so is, you said you're concerned about s sperm counts and fertility, but people don't generally stick their phones in their pants. Is, is, well, actually, is, this, is this systemic? I mean, if you're holding the phone, I get, are you an antenna? Is your whole body an antenna? Or is this people actually carry their phone in their pockets? The phones are engineered today so that the antenna is usually out the back and it's symmetrical. So half of the radiation from the, that phone gets into whatever it's next to. I keep my phone on airplane mode right now and just I'm using it to show you this. There are ways to use phones more safely. I'm not telling you not to use phones because of course they can be useful. But I think everyone needs to use their phones a lot less than they do. And to know that distance is your friend. And if you talk less, you'll be better off. You can use the phone as long as you keep it away from your body. But in general, we're using phones for a lot of rather silly purposes. The danger is real. Very real. Should you quit using your cell phone? Let's be realistic. So what can you do? What should you do? How can you protect your family? How can you protect yourself? So you 
use it in speakerphone mode, for example? Absolutely. Use it in speakerphone, use it with a headset, and understand that the World Health Organization reviewed the evidence on this with experts who were independent, and they concluded that cell phone radiation was in the same category as DDT and engine exhaust. Now, we wow. take steps for DDT and engine exhaust. We won't give those things to children to play with. Right. I, you know, when, when Teddy Kennedy got brain cancer, I, my, and it's, uh, who knows? I mean, obviously, but they, he's, there's a lot of people who are getting that brain cancer who are of the age to be the early adopters, not for this generation of phones, but for the much earlier ones. I, I remember having a phone back in the 80s that, that actually burned the skin on, my, on yeah. the palm of my thumb um, using the thing, which was right next to where the antenna was, one of those exactly. little pull-out antennas. Um, is, it, is it possible that they've gotten so much better that we don't have to worry, and it's really the people who were exposed 10 and 20 years ago? who have to be concerned or well, are we, have we just gone from x-ray the, sh the foot to radium on the watch dial? And we well, you know, that's a very good question and the answer is I don't know. You're absolutely right. The old phones were worse and the people who use them the most, the realtors, the lawyers, the politicians, they are the cutting, the, the first wave of uh, damage that we're seeing. But I really think that brain cancer is the wrong question. We've got to stop asking about it and we've got to start looking at the effects that we see on learning, on the nervous system, on some people who are very sensitive to this radiation and find it really incapacitating for long. A lot of people now are experiencing tinnitus, headaches, and even spells of dizziness that they can't fully understand. And it may turn out that these exposures are having effects on the nervous system that we don't really well understand. This non-ionizing radiation. Absolutely. It is non-ionizing, but it's quite dangerous over the long run. And we've got to be do a better job of protecting ourselves. That's why we created Environmental Health Trust. And please like us on Facebook. And I look forward to talking to you more about this on the radio. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Pleasure having you with us.